Have you ever thought about your theology of R&R? What do you believe about rest and relaxation? Hi, Alex McFarland here, and today I want to talk about rest and just taking some downtime, and as the Bible calls it, a Sabbath. Uh, it's so good to have you on the TNG webcast, and I appreciate you taking time to talk about a subject probably a lot of people really don't think about is a Sabbath. Now, obviously, we know that Saturday is the Sabbath day. Christians go to church on Sunday, and we're going to come to that in just a moment. But let's look at what God's Word says a little bit about rest. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it talks about, in a relationship with the Lord, times of refreshing come. Isn't it something that the, the Word of God talks about being refreshed and, and resting and just thinking about all that we have in the Lord? In John 10, 28, 29, Jesus said of his followers, he said, I give to them eternal life and they will never perish and nothing can pluck them out of our hands. Uh, God has you in the palm of his hand and that is a great comfort. And so we can rest in those things and uh, the Sabbath is something that really us type A, go get them, proactive Americans probably don't think about a lot because we've always got something going on. And uh, I think really this COVID-19 has caused a lot of people to have a little time to reset and sort of slow down a little bit. Isn't it interesting that our calendars and, and all the agenda we set for ourselves have really kind of been forcibly removed from our hands? And, I think that in this Western world, very materialistic, sometimes our daytimer is full, but our souls are empty. And so it's good to revisit the subject of the Sabbath. Now, obviously, the Sabbath comes to us from the Hebrew word Shabbat. And uh, observant Jews weekly observe a Sabbath, a Shabbat, a time of rest. And God gave this to the ancient Israelites. You can read about it in Exodus 20. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Now, the ancient Israelites were very often reminded of God's love for them, God's deliverance as they were brought out of the Egyptian captivity. And today, to this very day, observant Jewish people keep a weekly Sabbath. It's a very important thing. And you know, even modern psychology and modern medicine tells us that we all need that downtime. Now, regrettably, a lot of people They'll just take the weekend, rush, rush, rush to go off on a trip and uh, rush, rush, rush to get back and go to work. And there's not really been any appreciable rest. They've just, uh, they're less two or three days of their time and a lot of their money as well. And really, it, it's a discipline, I will grant you. And for Christians to take some time of rest, uh, I want to make a distinction between Sabbath and Sunday. Because a lot of times I've had people call into the radio show and they'll say, well, for the Christian, Sunday is the Sabbath. No, the early church worshipped on Sunday. That was the day that the tomb was found empty, resurrection day. But the Sabbath is a Jewish concept and a Jewish reality. It has been and is the seventh day of the week, Saturday. But it wasn't just a time to cease from work. It wasn't just a time to stop the normal activities of the week. It was time to reflect on God and to worship and to count one's blessings. And it was not only a downtime for the body, but a time of refreshing for the soul. Now, a lot of leaders past and present have talked about the value and the importance of keeping a Sabbath. Even the great thinker Thomas Aquinas, Mr. Logic, and uh, we need to talk about Aquinas. We're all, at least to one degree or another, indebted to Aquinas. He lived 1225 to 1274. And somebody asked Aquinas one time, was it appropriate for uh, a follower of the Lord to engage in, they used this word 800 years ago, sports and entertainments. Now, they weren't talking about the NFL or Major League Baseball. But what they meant was games, just something to turn off your mind just for fun and have uh, games and a time of relaxation. And Aquinas, surprisingly, he said, yes, that's appropriate because the main end of life is to think about God and to know God. And if some downtime and some mindless rest and activity enables you to come back more refreshed, more able to serve God, 
reflect on the Lord, serve your family, and be the good person that God wants you to be, then therefore rest is appropriate because it refreshes us. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But I've, I've got a quote from a man that I quote frequently, Vance Havner. Vance Havner was a minister, very influential in the life of Billy Graham. He wrote 38 books, and Dr. Havner was preaching about rest. And somebody came up and said, Dr. Havner, this thing about resting and being idle, you know, the devil never takes a rest. And Vance Havner said, well, so who says we're supposed to be like the devil? And you know, he's right. We are to take a rest, and it's good that we can do that. Well, you know, one of the things about the TNG webcast is we take questions, and I want to go to some questions right now. And I want to say thank you for the reposts, thank you for sharing, and I want to say thanks for the questions that people send in. We love to hear from you. And even if we don't get your question live in the middle of a webcast, your question might become content for a future program. So let us hear from you, and uh, we're grateful when we do. Uh, Jennifer from Texas. Jennifer, if you're watching, thanks for watching. But here's what Jennifer from Texas asks. You spoke about the Jewish Shabbat and what they think about on their Sabbath. What should we Christians think about or do on our day of observance? Great question. Great question. Do you know what? I'm going to quote 1 Corinthians chapter 11. When Jesus was giving his disciples instructions about the, the communion table, and he said, do this in remembrance of me. And as often as you do this, you take the elements of communion. He said, this bread represents my body broken for you. This, this juice represents my blood shed for the remission of sin. Do this, and as often as you do it, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so I think one thing that Christians should think about um, as they take rest, as, as you discipline yourself to incorporate a Sabbath into your week, think about the love of God, think about the love of Jesus, Think about the fact that we will see God one day. You know, uh, communion, which is, you know, a remembrance. You look back at Jesus and what he did. You look inward at the state of your heart currently. And you look forward to the time of Christ's return. Great, great question. Here is Rue Simbiring. Rue, we love you and we appreciate the Simbiring family. I, I appreciate this question. What is your favorite animal from the Bible? That is a great question. Nobody's ever asked me that question before. Um, people ask the question, will there be animals in heaven? I believe there will. The Bible tells us that uh, in uh, the restored kingdom, the lion will lie down with the lamb. The child will safely play by the adder's den. Uh, we know there will be lions, lambs, and yes, snakes, but not in a fallen state where snakes are dangerous. So I believe there will be animals in heaven. The Bible says Jesus will come on a white horse. But my favorite animal from the Bible, do you know what I've got to say? I think my favorite animal from the Bible is the lamb. Because the lamb was slain for the Passover sacrifice. Uh, Jesus is called the lamb of God, given before the foundation of the world. And we, when I was growing up on a farm in North Carolina, we actually had lambs at one time. And they're a precious little creature. I love animals and I love lambs. Okay, this is... a. Uh, Kathy Hearing from Mississippi. Thank you so much, Kathy, for watching. Asking God to help me establish a pattern of peace, calm, and patience, which I'm lacking. Uh, that's a good request. That's a good request, Kathy. And do you know what? I'll give you a Bible verse, and then we're, we're going to have to wrap in a minute. But James 4, verse 2 says, You have not because you ask not. God is a God who answers prayer. Matthew 6, 8, Jesus said the Father knows what we need even before we ask. But God is honored when we ask because we are showing that he's our source. So when you need peace, you need some order and structure and just a little bit of tranquility in your, in your soul amidst the noise of life, talk to God about it and he will help you. He really, really will. He's met the greatest need of all, love and forgiveness, restoration. We know he'll meet those other needs as well. I want to say thank you so much. I want to encourage you to incorporate a Sabbath. It rehumanizes us. We get some downtime. Be bold. Disconnect. Boot down the computer. Turn off your mobile device. Get some quiet time where you can hear that still small voice of God who says, here is the way. Walk ye in it, as we read in the Old Testament. 
I am so grateful for all of you watching this, reposting, sharing. Hey, we've got a YouTube channel, Truth For A New Generation. Subscribe, please. Like this. And we look forward to seeing you Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on the Truth For A New Generation webcast. May God bless you and give you his rest.